Hello and welcome back to Luigi's Gaming Lounge. Our name is Luigi Mario and today we are recording episode 39 and I have with us Out of Time at Doe 1 aka Andy, hello. And we also have Trip Hazard aka Barnaby, hello. And we also have Terrors aka Bam, hello. Hello. Alright guys, so uh, before we start this uh this episode those of you that listened last week will remember we introduced the segment trash or stash now we've mixed it up slightly um due to uh several different reasons commitments etc and what we're going to do now with that segment is each one of us are going to give one trash and one stash from our own personal experiences uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later in the episode. Um, we are, What I want to do is start this off by just talking about the deal that Sony have made with Bungie. Um, I'm guessing most of you people out there um, know about this by now, as it has, has been a few days um, mm. since they, uh, they said something. Um, Barnaby, have you got anything you want to say on, on the uh, Sony Bungie deal? Yeah, I mean, at first glance, it does look like it's just like a, a simple tit for tat with uh, with Sony trying to keep pace with Microsoft. Mm -hmm. But from what I understand, this deal has actually been several months in the the, the making. It's uh, only yeah. recently come to light. Yeah. Um, on the face of it, it doesn't excite me that much uh, mm -hmm. because I'm not really a big. Uh, lover of Bungie games. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm a fan of Halo, but that is now a 365 games development, I think, rather than Bungie. Um, and there isn't that much in the lineup that really does it for me, so I'm a kind of a bit meh about this news. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it is a big deal. It's like a $3.2 billion deal, if I remember correctly. I think, I think 3.6, I think. 3.6, I stand I could correctly. be wrong, I could be wrong. But no, I'm I think it is. I think it is three point six. Yeah. I think it is three point six. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, Luigi doesn't get out of bed for less than a trillion. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm surprised he's. I'm surprised he even bothered reading that. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, yeah. it does make me wonder though, because this seems to be like um, the latest in a long list of acquisitions. Yeah. And is it going to be the case where we're going to see almost like Disney syndrome, where all the big companies buy up all the smaller companies? And there yeah. isn't going to be any smaller video game companies or even like medium sized uh, video game companies anymore. So it is an interesting uh, trend. Yeah, I mean, it's you... interesting to see what happens in the future. But yeah, this particular deal just in itself doesn't, doesn't, doesn't get the juices flowing for me. It's, it's interesting that you said about like the Disney syndrome, um, so to speak, mm -hmm. because um, I think if you look at sort of movies, Hollywood, stuff like that. Um, I mean, it's difficult to to sort of for a film to catch your eye if it isn't made by Disney or it isn't made by Warner Brothers or you know, like you said, all these big um, you know big big companies. And it does seem like um, the sort of gaming entertainment side of things is is going down that same sort of route. Um, but uh, I'm just reading something here from GamesIndustry.biz. Um, in an interview with them, Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan uh, said that Destiny 2 and future Bungie games will continue to be published on other platforms, including mm. rival consoles. Mm -hmm. um, it says here, the advantages Bungie offers Sony is in its ability to make huge multi-platform live service online games, which is something the wider organisation is eagle, eager to learn from. Uh, Andy, have you got any uh, any opinions on this? Um, I'm in the same sort of boat as Barney, to be fair. Um, I was a huge Bungie fan from the original Halo. Um, I absolutely love the Halo universe. Played it since the original Halo for yeah. many, many, many hours. Um, I also actually enjoyed the Mist game um, back on the PC in the 90s. Um, mm -hmm. And my recollection, that's Bungie as well. But in recent times, Destiny's passed me by. Destiny yeah. didn't really grip me in any which way, shape, or form. I yeah. do, however, know that there is a big player base. There but is, it's not yeah. My cup of tea. Um, and I think it is a bit more like Marmite. Um, I just think it's a hell of a lot of money, but not a lot of return on the investment. 
Do I mm. think it's the tit for tat? No, I don't. You know, if if Barney's um, research is correct, it's, it's been long long in the making. But I don't know whether it's the smartest business move because the actual sort of the intellectual property that Bungie has at the moment that's valuable <laughs> is Destiny. That is it, Destiny. Yeah. Um, and if they're going to keep it on multiple platforms, yes, it's going to generate revenue. Um, but I've just had a look now while we're discussing, and Bungie's estimated annual revenue is currently a quarter of a billion. Right. Now, that would take 14 years to pay back that 3.6 billion investment Yeah. if it makes a quarter of a million per year. That's a long time to get a return on that. Um, the only thing we don't know, though, is obviously what Bungie have got on their sleeve. Because Bungie have got that, you know, Mist opened up a whole new sort of genre of game in the 90s, and Halo was iconic when it was released yeah so if bungie has got this ace up their sleeve and they've shared this information with sony during their talks and that's what's added this value to it um then it could be a smart move but obviously joe public doesn't know that yeah. as it stands at the moment you can see all the other acquisitions you can see how they're going to get that return on investment all these intellectual property rights they're getting and it's like wow well, you know what i can see why they've spent that much money at the moment can i see it no is it partially biased because I don't like Destiny, potentially? So I imagine if you're a Destiny player, you're going to think it's a fantastic purchase. Mm -hmm. um, but I am intrigued to see Bungie's got to have something in their pipeline. Yeah, Destiny's not going to last forever. Um, they did it with Halo. They did it with Destiny and they did it with Myst. They seem to be very much focusing on one sort of brand and developing it and getting the player base. It'd be interesting to see what's next for Bungie. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and uh, they seem to be uh, going down a, a different route in the sense of um, because they've they've mentioned well, Jim Ryan mentioned there um, that uh, basically uh, that Bungie will continue to publish um, on other platforms, including rival consoles. And as we've seen with um, the uh, Bethesda Bethesda um, acquisition. Um, They've gone a totally separate way with that, obviously, uh, Microsoft. Um, so yeah, just it, like I say, in the coming, I sort, I sort of think in the next couple of years we'll really see what these acquisitions have done for the companies. Um, obviously, we're not going to see anything straight away, but yeah, I reckon give it a couple of years and we'll we'll start to see a shift in in what's going on. Um, I think in a couple of years, either Bungie are going to be laughing to the bank thinking, Christ almighty, Sony paid all that money to us. Yeah. Or Sony's going to be laughing all the way to the bank, saying, Christ, is that all it cost us? Because look at this new IP. <laughs> yeah, that, that's good. They're both possibilities. Um, exactly. No, that, that will be interesting, actually. Yeah, and you made a good point there. That is interesting yeah. to see exactly what Bungie has in development over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. Because game development times are so long, they may only have a few uh design documents and they may not have actually started um software development on it yeah yeah but uh yeah yeah those, those it, ideas it's... alone though could be what mm. sony have paid for exactly very true uh sam uh, have you got anything you want to add to this um yeah so uh similar to, to andy with um you know for the bungee sort of days for me were back when halo was first developed on the original xbox um yeah. Didn't really follow much after that. Um, like, literally played Halo 1, 2, and that was pretty much, yeah, where I, I left. Halo it. 3? I did play Halo 3, but I'll be honest with you, I didn't take to it. At the time, okay. I think I was I was heavily into Battlefield and Call of Duty at the time, so it kind of just, like, went over me a bit. Um, yeah. But certainly Halo 1 and 2, I was, yeah, I, I played a, a lot of that, so... Um, uh, yeah, so with the, and yeah, moving on to sort of like when they uh, brought out Destiny, um, it was, yeah, it was sort of after my time on that sort of side of things that had gone by, it just went over me. But I know my little brother, um, who's it's about 12, 13 years younger than me, he played a lot of uh, Destiny, um, and I know he really enjoyed it. So, um, so yeah, there's certainly a following there, um, and, you know, just based on the amount that Sony have paid for the for the Bungie IP, uh, with the Bungie as a company and, and the IP or whatever, um, just goes to show that there must be some value there because they're, they're you know, anyone who does any sort of business deal, um, you, you have to look at numbers. Um, and at the end of the day, they've come to that conclusion somehow, you know, of three points to that figure somehow, of 3.6 mm. million. Um, and 
yeah, who knows whether they've got things up their sleeve. Um, I'm sure they do. Um, yeah. But it's but it's also similar to what we were saying about the Activision. Um, uh, uh, you know that, that Microsoft had um, managed to acquire. Um, it's one of them where you just don't know what is, for example, the Sony development team on, you know, whatever games or other IPs that they're, 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 they're working on themselves and the existing Bungie team can both come up with when put together. Do you know what I mean? So there, there's, there's, yeah. there's, there's possibilities that, you know, they could bring out an entirely new franchise. And to be honest with you, I see that that is what I think will happen. I think that... They've probably, like you said, the deal's been months in the in the works. Um, I'm pretty sure there's been talks and negotiations of, of obviously what what they're looking to potentially produce or make or, or you know bring to the table and and ideas and, and all the rest of it. So I think we'll be shocked. I think we'll we'll um, mm. yeah. I think there's going to be some form of new game, like you know, like Destiny, like like you know, yeah. a, a, a new a new iteration of something. Um, not, that's not even necessarily like that, but do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I mean, judging by past performance, because they've always been an FPS company, I think back in the day before they became famous with Halo, Marathon on the Mac was like the go-to FPS, and then they did it again with Halo on the Xbox, and then they did it again with the multi-format um, Destiny. So exactly, it looks yeah, like so... the, uh, Sony is banking on the next on, so generation of yeah. FPS. yeah. Yeah, and let's not I... forget as well. But uh, Destiny Two um, uh, is now obviously free to play as well, isn't it? So um, you know it opens it up to a hell of a lot of players being free to play. Yeah, so. and if they can acquire you know a good following from that being free to play, and then they go and drop, whether it's Destiny Three or it's um, completely new idea, um, yeah. I think sony are partly banking on you know not not obviously what they've currently got to work with but what is potentially going to be if you know what i mean and and you know some can argue that that's a bit of a risky business move and it is to a degree but uh it's like andy said (laughs) either uh sony are going to be laughing all the way to the bank or uh yeah bungie or is it so is it it they've acquired bungie and and how have they are they literally from like Bungie, they bought Bungie out themselves. I haven't quite looked into the details, or have they bought that from? Um, uh, well, how, how has how has the deal gone down exactly? I don't know the every single detail, but I do know that basically, yeah. So, um, it's I think it, they're treating it more like a partnership as such, um, where Bungie is still staying sort of like but they a, own. But they it, yeah, but they own the the. Sony the also yeah. paid an addition. I think they're paying an additional one point two billion. To retain Bungie staffing. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So, so, I, I mean, I, I would say that you know, so Sony it's a takeover, are not... but they're keeping the existing infrastructure as much as they can. Yeah. 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 I yeah, mean, yeah. Sony. Uh, I mean, as far as t- the tit for tat thing goes, I don't really see that necessarily. I mean, it might. It's obviously, you know, it's going to perk a few ears up, but I don't think mm. that really. It's uh, probably not what the uh, the approach was because, mm. like Barney said, the the deal's been going on for a while, so. But I do think that, um, again, just like the Activision side of things, exciting times ahead. There's, uh, yeah, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure something's going to come out of the works, and um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to go one way or the other. Wow. Isn't it? It's either going to be, a, it's either going to be a big hit, and everyone's going to love it, and it's going to be, you know, they're going to start see a faster return on that investment, or it's not going to work so well. And uh, yeah, you know, 14 years could quite easily stretch to 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it goes, uh... Could just be a money pet. <laughs> Because. But exactly, there, is yeah. one, there is one more footnote in that uh, apparently Bungie also has interests in expanding beyond video games. Oh. Which is what, very ne- open-ended. Ne- and toasters. Hang on <laughs> exactly. a minute. Hang on a minute. So if it's they're... It's the Xbox's fridge. Well, you see, so obviously Sony have um, a movie to par- department, Sony Movies. Maybe they maybe they might be looking to make a Destiny movie or TV oh. series. Or, or, Does sound know. like, uh, yeah, like a highly highly um, probable high possibility. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, oh, and with and with that, there's a lot of money. I mean, we know obviously the gaming sector is huge, but the movie sector is also huge. So yeah, an I'm... opportunity to turn down a potential film, Destiny movie, something like that would be. I mean, Sony have got the the tools 
they've got the the the, the team they've got the yeah. knowledge to be able to pull off a seriously good film like i mean have you it would be one of the very few that's actually made a decent film of a game conversion yeah, I mean, yeah. So well, that, that's probably that's actually I think probably on average, the most they're likely... getting better though. They're a lot better mm-hmm. in the two thousands onwards than they were in the nineties on. Uh, oh, BA Barney, you watched Doom with Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the last fifteen the first, minutes were great, first, but yeah, other first, than that, it was a first, bit shite. Uh, <laughs> the first person uh, mode section is is yeah. just. <laughs> well, uh, well that, whilst we're talking about uh, gaming, um, well, adaptions onto movies and tv shows did you guys watch the halo trailer for the tv series nope oh right after this podcast guys please let's watch it together because it it is it looks awesome but anyway for the viewers as well yeah and watch it let us know what you think yeah it looks so good um so just to, to sort of close on this subject um, Jim Ryan, um, and this is quoting him, he said... Fucking Jim again, it's always him. <laughs> he said, we should absolutely expect more. We are by no means done. Um, so yeah, with PlayStation, we have a long way to go. I will personally be, personally be spending a lot of my time with Pete and the team at Bungie, helping make sure that everything beds down right and that autonomy means autonomy but elsewhere in the organization we have many more moves to make see that says elsewhere in the organization so it could yeah to be be honest with you luigi i would say that you've probably nailed that when it comes to where they're thinking that this value of 3.6 billion i know it's difficult to put value on something that hasn't been made or exists but they're probably thinking that if we take their what they've currently got, knowing full well that we are, you know, it's going to cost us this much to bring this to the table, the returns on that could be huge. Like, yeah. they probably have looked at that as well. So, not mm-hmm. only have you got the fact that they are could potentially be bringing out a new game, new franchise, which I'm sure they are anyway, but there's the movie side of it. It probably could work out quite well for Sony. Like, if that all if that all lands into place, then that 3.6 billion will probably get swallowed up pretty, you know, paid back pretty quick. Um, oh yeah. So, you know, within less than five years, if it all goes to plan, like, and they'll probably be sit, sat comfy. So it's mm-hmm. one of them, but it's, um, yeah. yeah, he who dares. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, we'll, um, we'll leave that there. Unless, have, have any of you got anything else to say on that, or are you good to move on? Yeah, I'll no, be honest, I've been talking about Sony, so there's been a bit of sick in my mouth through the whole thing. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, we were expecting that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so the next uh, subject, because uh, we'll leave the trash or, trash or stash to, towards the end. Um, I wanted to discuss Dying Light, which releases tomorrow, which would be the day that this podcast um is put out to you guys, which is uh, Friday the 4th of February. Um, So yeah, it gets released tomorrow, and I've been looking at reviews. My goodness, I have not seen so many split um, scores on a game in quite some time. Um, And when I say split scores, I mean I've seen a 9.5 out of 10, and I've seen a 4.5 out of 10. That's that's a huge difference. Huge, huge difference. I mean, I'm interested... The first one, I did play a little bit. I know Andy and Barnaby, I know you guys played it, it quite so a bit more. Good. Yeah, It was so good. It was a really good game. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I'm hoping that the reviews with the better scores are right, but I fear the worst due to the fact that I'm seeing it like now in front of me. The Guardian. I know they're a paper, but two out. Of, <laughs> yeah, uh, two two out of five. I mean, come Do they on. know about gaming, Luigi. Yeah, yeah, but come on, two out of five. I mean, you can't give that score unless it is pretty diabolical, surely. It's I mean, the Guardian. They've probably got politicians in their back pocket, and they've been paid <laughs> two out of five for some reason. Do you reckon? Yeah, God knows. <laughs> they probably just never played a game in their life. I mean, it was, you know, it was shaping up and looking, especially like, because uh, they've released a lot of um, a gameplay footage and, and so on, and it was looking like it was 
it was going to be a really good game. And I mean, um, the game itself, I can't remember if it's set 10 or 20 years ahead. It's something like that. Anyway, it's so many years ahead of the first game. So um, there's a lot more hand-to-hand combat because obviously things like guns and bullets are a lot more scarce in this game. Um, and I thought that was quite interesting, um, quite a bold move, and also something that would be a lot of fun, you know, playing with friends, because as we know, the first one, the first uh, Dying Light game, was awesome when you played it with friends. I mean, I've got a memory when I played it with you guys, and it was night time, and we was in, like, our base area, and you guys were like, oh, yeah, you don't want to go out there when it's night time, because <laughs> the, there's these, like, certain zombies or something, and I was... I, I was horrid things. <laughs> yeah, I was crapping myself. I was... <laughs> I mean, it doesn't take a lot, but... Yeah, um, so, no, all, really, all I want to say on that, mainly, is I just really hope that um, that it delivers. I have seen, as well, that the developers... Um, they did put out a statement because some people had actually received their orders early. Now, I know it's not unusual to receive your pre-order a day, maybe two days early, but I think people had got hold of these three, four days, so like at the start of this week, um, and they did release something basically uh, almost like pleading to um, the people who got hold of the game, saying that, um, you know, please wait until... The, the Friday, uh, because as is typical with games these days, they have a day one update. When you, as soon as you you purchase the game, you stick it in or you download it. There's an update on the release date. Um, so it's making me wonder: did they ship this off half broken, and they're relying on this update to to fix it? I mean, Some punk all over again. Yeah, I mean, there's a possibility because. You know, saying something like that and then seeing these scores, it, it does make you wonder. Because I'm, I'm guessing that update, um, you know, people that have reviewed it haven't got that update, I, I assume. So, it's, it's it's stupid, but at the same time, like, why do that? Um, because then, surely you know you, the reviews are going to be bad. Because if they're reviewing a half, half-assed game, as such... Do you, do you see what I'm it's, it's to do with the manufacturing, I imagine, isn't it? You'll have deadlines to meet, yeah, quotas to meet, and things like that. So you need to get it on the production line. You need to get that tangible product out into the shops, out out from the wholesalers, all things like that. Mm. Whereas, and then you can still work on on code in between that with yeah. the intention of doing that day one update. That so day I imagine, one update, yeah. But then surely, surely, this is what I mean. So, in a sense, it almost makes. Um, these sort of early reviews, um, null and void, really. Do you not think? Yeah, I think it depends on the content of the reviews. Because, um, yeah, like Barney was saying, myself, him, Dave, we absolutely love Dying Light. Um, yeah. And it is one of those games. I, I've, you know, we all have been quite spoiled with Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Um, but Dying Light Two is one of those games that I would consider buying because I had such a great time on it. Um, and when you sort of messaged us all earlier or yesterday, whenever it was about the, the poor reviews, I'll yeah. be honest, there was a tear came to my eye. So I did a bit of reading myself. And like you say, it's like Marmite. But yeah. I have read a few and it seems to be consistent. There's either some issues over the bugginess, mm-hmm. which is pointless. You know, the, the, the day one patch is going to address that. Yeah. Um, and then the other common one is repetition um, mm-hmm. and sort of a bit rinse and repeat. Okay. Now, if I look back to the original Dying Light, you could argue it was rinse and repeat. They're very similar sort of missions, very similar um, scenarios you've got to work through. Yeah, you can craft your own weapons and things, but the battle mechanics is very similar. You have X amount of zombies all do different things. But that wasn't what made the game. To, mm. to me, I don't know whether it's the same for Barney, it was an amazingly fun multiplayer game. It gave you a real sense of open world, you know, the sheer size like you say there was elements of feeling really scared that the the zombies if you weren't well equipped they would butcher you you know it's not just a standard zombie game um there was a little bit of strategy to the mechanics to be able to survive it just felt it gave me a real feeling of being there and and did i sort of relate to character or anything no but playing with my mates online it felt like we could have been there in real life doing what we were doing yeah and that made it fun 
So if they've kept that same mechanic and some people just find the story a bit boring or it is a bit rinse and repeat, if they haven't bro- if they haven't fixed what wasn't broken, I'll probably be in that, that top percentile who actually still rate it. So yeah. I would not go into Dying Light expecting to have a fantastic one-player experience. I would go into Dying Light wanting to log on with my mates, kill some zombies, camp out, get scared shitless and have a fun time. Yeah. Um, so only time will tell. Yeah, I mean, um, I think you hit the nail on the head there, really. I mean, beyond um, sort of Dying Light games, any game that is, say, rinse and repeat may be fairly boring if you're playing it on your own as a single-player game. Um, The moment you bring friends into the mix, um, it opens up different opportunities to approach a mission in a certain way because there's obviously four, you know, three, four of you. Um... So even if something is a bit rinse and repeat, you're having a, a laugh with your friends doing it. And I think that's what, like you said, that ups the um, the feel of the game and ultimately ups your own thoughts and score for the game, if you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we can't really... Until tomorrow comes and the update comes, I don't think we're going to really know full well um, what's what. Because you know that, you know... Um, fans from the original Dying Light are going to be hot on this game and obviously they're going to be the ones that you want to sort of listen to especially obviously being fans uh, ourselves of the first one so yeah I imagine the, the, the original Dying Light I imagine it's going to be love it or hate it but I think the, the yeah. key thing as well is you know, like uh, games like Back for Blood that we've been playing recently similar to Left 4 Dead mm-hmm. they're great really enjoyable multiplayer games yeah. but there's no progression to it Mm. Whereas Dying Light, it saves. You drop in, you drop out, you progress your character's level, your character's ability, your weapons and things like that. And yeah. again, that gives you a sense of actually being there. That gives you a sense of there's a purpose. To a it. bit of an RPG you know, element to it. Yeah, it's got yeah, continuity. But, yeah, very, very light RPG elements, but there's a purpose. There's you know, not an end goal, so to speak, but it makes you feel like you've accomplished something. Yeah. And again, you can share tools and crafts and materials with your friends as if you were there in real life i like mm-hmm. that yeah. it, it created a bigger picture and a bigger purpose without having the, an amazing storyline yeah no i agree totally agree uh sam did you play the first dying light at all didn't actually um mm-hmm. my brother played it um said it was really good troy did say it you know you should play it you'll like it and um just didn't get around to it. It's just like like most games. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, you I, could um, be ten minute Luigi. Yeah, you could be. <laughs> I, I, I'm more like fifteen minutes Sam, which is like you know, <laughs> you know so I get slightly slightly more time on a game than Luigi, but not enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not enough to uh, yeah to warrant what I've paid for it. Put it that way. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the question is, would you, from the description alone, would you, would, could you consider buying it or, and playing it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I would enjoy it, to be fair. Um, Surviving just, the apocalypse together? Yeah, no, no. I think I would enjoy playing it. I just... Uh, yeah, there's just so many games. Like, I seem to... I don't know, you know, I'm sure we're, we're kind of all guilty of it to a degree... Mm. there's so many games and opportunities you know to play all these different games and i find Mm. myself thinking yes i really want to play that game like you know there's a new one it gets announced and then i either buy it download it or it's on a game pass or something do you know what i mean and then i play it for you know a day two days whatever like you know Mm. quite a lot you know i put a few hours in and then something happens you know i don't know like I just don't get the time one night or after a couple of nights to go by. I know exactly then the feeling. Before yeah, exactly you know it, you just don't go back to it. And then you do mm. rinse and repeat again. Another new game gets announced. And you're like, oh, yes, that's going to be brilliant. I want to play that. <laughs> and then well, it's a never-ending gonna, cycle. Yeah, and it's like a never-ending cycle. And then before you know it, you look at it and you're like, well, I've got about 30 games here. that uh, I played an hour on that In one, 20 way. minutes on that one. Yeah. And it's like... In and a way... It almost makes you like uh, eager to like get shorter games rather than longer games because Definitely. then you'd have a good chance of actually completed them. Uh, or, completing them. Like games like yeah. uh, say Portal were criticised for uh, only being about four four five hours long, 
but that means that you could almost definitely complete it uh, yes. without having I... to like put a certain amount of time aside. Um, and it, every like minute of portal was brilliant. They didn't have any fat around the edges, no padding. It was just like pure gameplay and good fun, I, I, I solid, interesting yeah. gameplay from start to finish. I, I think that's uh, yeah, I think that's a good. good so I think good, maybe good modern game developers could uh, could take a leaf out of uh, Portal's book and think of shorter, but more I, sort of I, I cleaner, think there's a, tidier, there's a market. more there, there's concise definitely games. A market. Yeah, there's definitely a market for the the older generation, or just not even necessarily the older generation. You know, the, people who the busier, we, if, the busier we, generation. We, we, well, well, the, well, the thing is, right over the last, especially the last ten years. I mean, it's continually uh, changing but mm. life is just getting more busier by the day for everyone there's so many more mm. things going on um mm. and whether that's you know work related social media yeah, related, we've got to record uh, podcasts we've got to <laughs> yeah exactly. oh, we've got to do um, research for the podcast we've got to think of games to trash your stash <laughs> exactly but it also goes back to what andy was saying before we started the podcast about not always seeing having the time to talk to friends, spend time with family, friends. Mm. But gaming does bring you together for that, uh, to, you know, to help sort of, um, sort of, you know, um, shorten the, you know, the gap, as it were, between mm. times of not talking to, to your friends and family. But the, Definitely. you know, the, 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 yeah, the point I'm sort of yeah, making is with the, um, with the gaming side of things, we just don't have the time anymore or as much mm. time. Don't get me wrong, when you're younger, you've got all the time in the world. But, you know, once you get responsibilities and you know you got to pay you got to go to work you got to pay bills you got a family blah 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 like those like you said that if there was more of those kind of shorter games like out there mm. available and you at least you would feel like you like you say it's possible to complete them or you feel like yeah mm. uh, you, you're getting a bit more value in your i think we're self- also spoiled though we're in you know we're adults now we've got disposable income and that's why we keep buying all these games mm. and we've yes. got these streaming services roll back to the n64 where you had to drop 70 quid to get one new game and you were like yeah. a teenager you were like oh shit yeah. you have but to you make that game hell out of that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> true yeah. yeah you did you were when literally I was a trying kid, to do i had like a dozen games that was it and i, I played completed all of those well pretty much yeah. all of those multiple yeah. times yes definitely you were even to the point where you, though you continually rinse and repeat them, it was almost like you were trying to come up with ways to complete them in a different way, even though there probably wasn't even a different way to complete them. You'd just be like, what else can I do? Like, what can I do here? Like, how can I do this? And it's just like, that you was know. real magic of gaming. Yeah. 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 yeah it, was, it was like a shiny new toy. This own, your own little virtual world that you could like explore I, I feel, and come I, I back to like... time and time again. Exactly. I feel like, though, if we... Let's just say for for like I don't know for a week you were like right you've got no you've got to worry about anything you've got to go work you've got to look after the kids you've got to you know see your missus you've got to do any of this. I do think that we if we all had that like there was just this week we would all probably spend and invest a lot of time if you know in gaming if that was the case you know just just say that all that was aside it was like if you want to just go and play games you would I feel like that would bring that back. But obviously the reality is that's never going to happen. So it's just like, <laughs> you know. Unless um, you win the lottery. Uh. Well, yeah, but then, you know, then then other things come come about, don't they? But it's, um, no, it, it's just one of them, isn't it? Yeah, the thing is, it's we don't have the time anymore. And yeah. the games are, a, a lot of these games as well, uh, the content in them is, don't get me wrong, it's brilliant. It's amazing the fact that these developers are bringing and being able to put so much content into games and so much little details and so many different, all sorts so of different You don't things. need your Great. horse's balls to shrink in the cold in Red Dead 2. You That's don't the need yeah. But, but your yeah, horse. What, what I'm getting, yeah, like, what I'm saying is, like, you don't, you don't, you know, we don't have the time. I don't have the time to spend, like, three hours working out right right this goes with this this does this this does that just so i can get started into a game it's just like i i i will literally my attention span and not just the attention span but the time span i have is so little nowadays mm. that i just think well yeah i ain't playing that like i'm just i, I give up before i even get started you know and, yeah. and it, it probably is an amazing game but that's just how it is whereas if I things think... were a bit more basic and a bit shorter and it was just kind of like it kind of got the ball rolling like within the first half an hour it'd be like all right i'm hooked i'm in do you know what i mean and that's yeah i think that's the thing in the old days uh maybe when you're a kid or a teenager having a game with like 80 plus hours of gameplay that was a great thing but nowadays as an adult you look at 80 plus hours think oh i just don't have the time for that 
I know, I'm, yeah. I'm not lucky if I get eight hours into a game, let alone eight. But it's it's, <laughs> it's 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 like it's like with the, what you were saying about N64, and you know that, that, those kind of games or whatever. You could literally pick up a game. I don't know. Sorry, one out. Snow, Snowball Kids, for example, on the N64. I don't know. You know, if some of you played it, whatever. But you could literally get that game. You put it in. You turn it on. You're like, right, cool. Here we go. Press start. Select your character. Select your board. You're in. You're literally in. You're playing. Like you've pressed about three buttons and you're in the game. Like you're like, all right, we're playing now. And then. It was just kind of like you just progress through. I know it's it's, it's hard to sort of you know, I'm, I mean that's like a racing game. Do you know what I mean? But but even today, like you know, games like that, it's not like that. You press your button, you're like, right, create my character. Right, what's he called? Blah blah blah. Then you go to the next stage. Oh, we need to put these tires on. What do you want to do with this? Do you want to change the color of this? Sometimes like register an account as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Five five you have to choose your penis size. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like that. It's like do you want to wear one glove. It's like one glove, two gloves. Like, you want pants on, no pants. Like, uh, no, I don't want any of that crap. I just want to play. Like, just mm-hmm. literally, I just want to play. So this is kind of the, uh, as much as it's great that we've got all this additional content and, you know, they're, they're giving out But it's about limited option. It's not necessarily the, the, the boiling Quali- down to it. It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality. I still, no. I still think the quality is still good. Don't get me wrong. I still think there's a lot yeah. of developers that are bringing out some really I good quality stuff. I think still a bit too much filler, though, in my mind. Yeah, there is a lot of quality out there, I agree. But I think there's still a bit too much filler that doesn't yeah, really true, add true. as much value. Uh, That's and if, true. if developers realise that, like, pared down all of that filler and just had the high quality stuff, the top-notch stuff, and stripped yes. out all the filler, they'd both be able to get we the would... product quicker to market, so they would start be able to sell it sooner. And also, um, at least for grown-up gamers, they'd have a lot. There'd be a lot more to appeal to them, because it wouldn't be such an uphill struggle trying to to, to get new games. That's true. I think, I think I think maybe I think maybe uh, uh, you know. And I never thought you would. You know, as, when you're younger, you never think like this. But you mm. know, now we're older as such. We are turning into that like. We're part of a different Visible generation. Old bastard, well, no, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Back in the days of the N64. Yeah, yeah but we are. No, we no, are part of a different joke. console. <laughs> We're part of a different generation. So, like, if I was to talk to my brother about like that, he would probably argue and say, "What do you mean? You've got, of course, you've got to create an account. Like, that's just a normal thing to do. Do you know what I mean? Or, of course, you've got to select that there. Like, that's just normal. Like, no, that's not my normal kid, to me. My kids like... don't know about blowing into a cartridge. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, that was probably the, that that part of that when we were gaming. That was the longest thing that took was getting the game to <laughs> work, <laughs> just <Yep>. blowing the <laughs> cartridge to get it to work. Yeah. Not actually playing it. Like, that wasn't even too bad, but. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, we're just from a different generation of gaming, aren't we? Now, you know, and that's just how it is. But I do think, yeah, if some developers, any developers listening to the podcast, please try and bring, cut the filler out, shorten yep. the games, bring back the basics, yep. and yep. we'll be very happy. <laughs> and and yep. loosely related, we'll all take a moment to remember all those secondhand cartridge games we used to buy and the <sighs> amount of gob. That would have been on those contacts of that cartridge that you then put your mouth so close to and blew into it. I know. Which I just thought about. I was like, yeah. oh. Lovely. Oh, no. Beautiful. Oh, oh. Well, <laughs> so on that note, we'll, uh, we'll leave uh, Dying Light <laughs> 2 there. Um, Somehow we've just really died. <laughs> Not, uh, digressed in you know, some crazy... <laughs> dying Light like cartridge. We've gone <laughs> di- Dying Light 2 to gobbing in cartridges. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> dying Light like 2 on N64. It's all part, it's all part <laughs> of the fun. Um, I just want to do a quick shout out to our number one fan, Afi Benz, as uh, today... Hey. Uh, I did do a, a stream today, and Afi Benz came onto the the chat, and um, we had a. When's a, he going to make a guest appearance? Uh, this is exactly what I was going to say. I did mention to him that I did say that the guys are interested in having you on the show. Um, you know, if if he's interested, we'd love to sort of have him on, and um, he's very he's very keen to uh, to do that. Um, so oh, yeah, good. so in the uh, in the very near future. Um, I mean, we'll iron out the details of what we're going to do, whether or not maybe some of us uh, want to ask him a couple of sure questions. Make sure he pays his entry fee. Yeah, yeah. or he could, um, if, he, if, he, if he doesn't want to do a full episode, he can always come on for a second part, or do you know what I mean? Whatever he feels comfortable with. Yeah, that's it. So we'll we'll get that sorted, uh, Afi Benz, and nice. uh, get you on as a guest, uh, guest star to the show. Um, but yeah, on to that as well. 
uh, if you'd like to contact us at um, Luigi Gaming Lounge, you can do so by emailing us, and the email address is Luigi's Gaming Lounge at gmail.com. That's Luigi's Gaming Lounge at gmail.com. Any questions you've got for us, or if you want to just pop by and say hi, uh, that's where you need to go to contact us. Um, so, you know what it is now, guys. You know what oh, it is. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 Treasure <laughs> Stash! I feel, like, I feel like we need a theme song. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to work on one. We need a theme one. tune. I'm going to work on one. That will be We my... need a theme tune. And it's got to be yeah, something dubstep. like... I feel <laughs> like... The ASH, Treasure Stash is here to stay. There you go. <laughs> oh, no. no. We need Do something it. like... You know, like the early 90s. You know, like a, a kind of like a fun house kind of yeah. like old school 90s theme. We yeah. need we need something like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's I a know. whole lot of fun. Prizes, Prizes to be won. It's a real great <laughs> show where anything could go. Yeah. So, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so as as I said at the be, the beginning of the this episode, um, we have changed it up so that we each give uh, one trash, one stash of our own personal choice, opinions, etc. Um, so, guys, should I should I start it off or should I, I'll get the ball yes. rolling? Go on then, you since you're king, you of king of the yeah. lounge. I'm king of the lounge. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my trash. I feel like, I feel like you want. I feel like you want it. Start and you just kind of politely said, "Shall I? Shall I start, guys? Do you yeah, know, I let's go. Yeah, yeah, take the thunder first. away from him. Take the thunder." <laughs> <away. laughs> right, my trash game, which is actually the second instalment. The first one came out in ninety-two. 19... No, <laughs> don't start with that. That's not trash. <laughs> um, back in the first one came out in nineteen ninety-nine, and this one. Came out in 2017, um, and it is called Outcast Second Contact, the most diabolical game I've played. Um, Are you actually brave oh, enough to play that? Yes, I remember <laughs> the original Outcast vaguely. Yeah, well, it had a very uh, unusual uh, graphical style. It uses the uh, voxels rather than polygons, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and I tell you what. The they still do. <laughs> I'm thinking of the wrong game. I'm thinking, is it what's the horror one that's out? Something. Oh, Outlast. You'll that's what that. I was thinking of. I've just had to Google Outcast. I thought, what the hell is that? No, no, not Outlast. Outcast. Um, yeah, so it's called Out- Outcast Second Contact. And from what I remember trying it, um, uh, because it was actually my son who who wanted to try it out, and this was going back a few few years ago, so not long after it came out, I believe. Um, we put it on and we both just sort of, after giving it five, ten minutes, trying it out, we both sort of just looked at each other like, this is garbage, this is total trash. Like, the controls were just absolutely diabolical. Uh, the graphics were, for a game, I know graphics isn't everything, but it was, yeah, just don't even waste your time. Outcast Second Contact, get in the trash. Um, so that's my trash. Should we go? I tell you what, let's go around and do our trash. Each of our trash. So, Barnaby, do you want to go next for your trash? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, although I can't, I kind of feel bad about it because, uh, in a way, it's not too bad of a game, but really, it's just too slight. But, uh, yeah, so we've been playing Donut County, which has recently been added to the uh, Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I thought I'd give it a try. And in a way, it's very appealing. It's uh, got nice graphical styles, got a fun little story. Um, basically, it's, it's very quirky, very weird. Uh, you control basically a hole, and the hole gets bigger the more stuff that it absorbs. <laughs> that sounds dodgy. <laughs> It does. <laughs> it absorbs everything on a particular area of the map, and you pass the map. Right. But the, the, the problem is the game page is just so slight mm-hmm. that it hardly, hardly feels like a game at all. It's more like a toy. Um, oh. So it's fun to mess around with it for a little while, but don't see any lasting appeal and not that much replay value. So, oh. yeah, it's a shame because it is a nice, uh, it is a nice-looking little indie game, but it is very slight. It's very slight. It's the sort of thing... It strikes me more as almost like a, a, a mobile app game rather than a console oh, okay. uh, a release. Yeah. So, yeah, if you get it for free, it's worth it. But I wouldn't. Would I pay money for it? Not particularly. 
not particularly. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to uh, trash that one reluctantly. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, not, uh, I didn't try that. Oh, that was the one that we was going to try out uh, this uh, week, one of them anyway. But um, but yeah, I didn't bother after we decided to do this. So I don't think I shall bother now. Now that you, <laughs> I think uh, I'll just put put it in the trash myself. Um, thank you for that, Barnaby. Uh, Sam, what is your trash game this week? So, um, which will, this will come as a bit of a surprise to you, actually. So, I've been talking to you about World War Three, haven't I? Oh, damn. What, the game? Yes. The uh, no, no, the, 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 the game. Can we struggle so, the Russian border again? <laughs> <laughs> so, for those that don't know, World War Three is an FPS, and it came out a couple of years ago, I believe. Um, maybe even a bit longer. And it was a bit of a flop. It was P- meant PC to be... only, isn't it? it? Yeah, it was PC only. It was yeah. meant to be almost... Um, it's very similar to Battlefield. And it was... I think the approach was that at the time, Battlefield hadn't made a modern-day Battlefield since, like, Battlefield 4. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of filling a gap because Battlefield was going down the, uh, like, World War One, World War Two routes with Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 and... Mm-hmm. I think the idea behind it was let's bring a game out that's similar to Battlefield, but back in the modern era, and you know, hopefully it'll be a hit. It dropped, it came out, I paid for it, I played it. Now, I didn't hate it, but it was very buggy and very glitchy. Um, mm-hmm. And it got really, it got mixed reviews, but I felt they were mainly more negative than positive. Um, so they stopped the game, they cancelled the game effectively, and rebuilt the game uh, supposedly um which they had been doing over the last uh, few years now i'm not 100 percent sure if they changed developers or they got new developers on board but i think they might have but again i'm not 100 percent sure because i didn't overly follow the sort of you know the, the new development process of it um but recently um well in the last few months it was available again um in beta um so basically they said we fixed the game or effectively rebuilt the game. Um, it's in beta, and everyone that purchased it could come and play it. So I thought, oh, I'll download that, and I'll give it another go. So I downloaded it, gave it another go. Now, it is an improvement, like a considerable improvement, actually, from what it was like when it first dropped. But the more I played it, the more I kind of realised that it also was still quite buggy and glitchy, um, and a bit clunky overall. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of thought, do you know what? If anyone's this this is a, this for me is a trash because it's not worth paying for. But you did, it, I believe it is going to play for free. Yeah. And um, to be honest with you, that's probably the smartest thing they could have done because uh, I think they probably know deep down that it still is a little bit, you know, it is a bit glitchy. And after the first failure to then come back after this long and still have it not really running great um, is you know it's not a good look is it so i'm gonna say it's a trash um if you were to buy it and i would say it's free to play so just give it a go uh but yeah i think overall it's a trash so yeah fair that's enough. my uh that's my trash yeah nice one fair enough thank you sam pc pc exclusive game there as well um andy can we have your trash please my trash Unlike Sam, I'm not going to rate it trash and then recommend you download it. <laughs> I'm also going to be, I'm also going to be quite well, controversial. It's free. It's free. <laughs> it's free. Um, my trash game is actually quite well received and has majority positive reviews. That's pretty much saying download it, isn't it? In the <laughs> no, way. I would say don't download it because I am open to most games and okay. on paper this game should have really pleased me. But it was I hated it. And that is Hello Neighbour. Oh, <gasps> how dare yeah, you! Controversy. No. Now, no. to me, that is one Hello... jumpy game. To me, Hello Neighbour. For uh, those who haven't played it, it's a stealthy game, but it's a puzzle game. Effectively, it's a stealthy puzzle game. Yeah. Um, but from the moment I picked it up, I'd heard good things. You know, it had a bit of a cult following at the time. I was really looking forward to it, and from the moment I started playing that game. It's clunky, the graphics are clunky, the controls are clunky, the physics are non-existent. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you can throw an object 
and it lands and you can throw an object and it bounces 30 foot the opposite that's, direction that's what it, made it so that's what made it so scary because you just didn't know what the hell yeah. was happening it, makes it was like a bad dream yeah. Yeah. it literally was like a nightmare it's like you're playing fucking octodad or something like that um, <laughs> the controls the physics it doesn't make sense um, like i say the graphics are clunky the controls are clunky there's no tutorial there's barely any dialogue you're pretty much thrown into this like you say, but it is very much like a dreamlike world, but it's not. It's supposed to be reality. You playing a kid, avoiding your grumpy old neighbour. Not to mention, on top of all that, it's fucking stupidly difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally impossible. Like, to the point of being frustrating. And again, you don't know where checkpoints are or save points are. And when you restart, you don't know what's going to be left from last time. So if you have spent 15 minutes frustratingly trying to balance a, a pile of boxes to get into a window you might respawn back before that point and then the same thing you did before isn't going to work because like i say the boxes bounce 40 feet into another fucking yard there is <laughs> no continuity to that game in any which way shape or form and for a game that packs itself so nice so colorful so child friendly it's enough to give people a stroke so for your own sanity Trash it. Oh, and that's, well. my <laughs> I mean, that's that's going to be quite a controversial trash because um, it is. Yeah. I like to go controversial. You do. I mean, I played that with um, obviously with my son, and um, I I really at first I didn't enjoy it, but the more I got into it, and the further I was getting, you know, passing the levels, I really did enjoy the puzzle element of working out how to get certain places and and so on, but. Um, the puzzle element's fine. Yeah. If there's actual the physics to solve the puzzle, I don't want to have to have an unsolvable puzzle of the weird gravitational pull for a fucking banana skin. It's <laughs> illogical and it makes it frustrating. Fair it's enough. It's a case of good idea, poor execution. Exactly. <laughs> However, yeah, I agree. The uh, we all had quite, quite a bit of fun with uh, Secret Neighbor, I believe, didn't we? Again, if you, it was really fun, but we all tired of it because again none of us really knew what the fuck we were doing <laughs> it, it was fun but we were we just, were making we were too, making it fun too obtuse for its own good yeah, yeah we were it's making that game an area fun. of mystery uh, and then it's just just like being too awkward and unplayable yeah it was yeah, it's so it was mysterious early. it keeps itself in mystery it's like, yeah exactly <laughs> All right, well, that's our trash games uh, for this week. So, moving on to Stash. Now, um, I'll kick this off with the game Bubsy. that... Hey? Bu huh? What? You said Bubsy. No, that was last I week. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should actually put that in my Stash, since you lot trashed it last week. But no, Sorry, anyway. Bubsy too, then. There you go. <laughs> um, this game, I have been... I played it actually today on stream... And I played it, I think it was last Friday for the first time on stream. Um, and that is the game called Firewatch, which came out in February 2016. Have any of you guys played it? I watched nope. you stream a bit of it, but I haven't played it. So yeah, Firewatch is an adventure game developed by Campo Santo and published by the developer in partnership with Panic. Um, so basically... There's, if you play it from the the beginning, obviously, um, there it's like a lot of dialogue at first, and you've got different options to choose, and it takes you through like I think it's about a good ten to fifteen years of your life just in dialogue, which sounds weird, but it is really good, and it really it for me it gripped me immediately. Um, anyway, through these different events that have happened through this dialogue uh, you go through. Um, you end up with a job, um, as it says, um, you're a fire watch ranger or whatever you want to call it, where you basically go and live out in the, the woods. There's other rangers in their posts and you're basically looking out for fires, obviously. But it's a um, it's like a mystery game because things start to happen. It's a very tense game. Um, I'm yet to finish it, but I think oh, I haven't got too much longer left of it. But absolutely, that is going in the stash because that is the sort of game um, where 
if you pay it for yourself, you would happily sit and watch somebody else play it for the first time and find out the whole story and everything like that. Plus, it's not overly... I think the campaign, um, the story of it all, and that, I'm sure you can get it done in about five hours, six hours. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those. It's not a. It's not one of these huge AAA games. It's quite short and sweet. Fantastic story. Play it, guys. Firewatch. Brilliant game. Stash, stash, stash. Stash, stash, stash. Barnaby, so let's have your uh, your stash game. Yep, cool. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go for a blast from the past uh, this time. So I did mention it briefly last week when we were talking about Bob C. and <laughs> Credible Alternatives on the, uh, the, the Mega Drive. Uh, because there's no shortage of good platform games on there, mm-hmm. so I'll just mention this one because I like to go, uh, I like to go retro, yeah, uh, a lot of the time. So, so Kid Chameleon is sometimes mm-hmm. well known, and sometimes lesser well known, but it was one of the first platform games I played on the Mega Drive uh, after Sonic, of course, yeah, uh, and it's got some really interesting features to it. So, the the, the gameplay itself is quite familiar. It features a lot of gameplay elements that anybody who's played uh, Mario uh, okay. will be familiar with. So lots of like uh, very similar sort of block type uh, level layouts. But the plot itself was quite better because you played a kid who was playing an arcade machine inside the actual video game. So it's quite meta. You're playing a game inside ah, a game, okay. which made it stand out a little bit. Uh, but it also had this kind of like weird kind of atmosphere. It wasn't anything in terms of like graphics or sound uh similar to uh mario or really any other platformer um it had this kind of like sort of weird unsettling kind of like eerie music eerie graphics um which is one thing that set out our part of the crowd and it was just like a good game uh you could pick up different um helmets which would give you different special abilities like one helmet would transform you into a samurai another helmet would turn you into a tank uh, another helmet would turn you into a fly. Um, so there's lots of different special abilities you could gain. Okay. And also quite a bit of variety in the levels as well. Um, I mean, if you're not a fan of the platform genre, it's not going to convert you. But I think if you are interested in Mega Drive games or platformers in general, I'd definitely give it a try. So it's this one's always going to be in my stash, I think. Awesome. I've, I've not actually played that before, but I've, um, as you was... Um obviously explaining everything about it i've had a quick look and it actually looks really quite cool so yeah i think uh, when i'm having one of my retro days i may have to uh, stick that on and give it a try yeah stream it i'll give you some tips (laughs) yeah yeah trash bubsy stash kid chameleon right okay (laughs) you know it makes sense (laughs) Kid chameleon the one the dude with the leather jacket and sunglasses yeah yep yeah well thank you for that barnaby um So, that's uh, Kid Chameleon in the in the stash. Uh, Sam, what is your stash game this week? For my stash game, again, probably going to be a surprise, is Call of Duty Vanguard. Oh. Wow. Yeah, so I haven't actually... Okay, right, I have actually played uh, downloaded and played Call of Duty, and that was that Modern Warfare that came out. It might have even been the last one before this one, and that wasn't too bad, but prior mm-hmm. to that, I hadn't played a COD for ages, and um, I think it was Advanced Warfare was maybe like one of the last ones I got, and it was awful. And yeah, like that was mm. that was a trash. That was like a hundred percent a trash. And to be honest with you, most of them were trashes. Um, after uh, maybe COD, Modern Warfare Two, something like, that, or maybe Black Ops One, something like that. Most of them were trash. So mm. but anyway, I decided to download and buy Call of Duty Vanguard um, at the beginning of the week. Um, a couple of uh, uh, friends um, who live local to me um, had just bought it and they said that it was cross play. They've got PS5 and they were like, Look, we've bought it. It's really good. Um, you know, you should come and get it, blah, blah, blah. And I was kind of like, No, nah, I'm not going to waste the money. You know, is anyone spending... getting the vibe that Sam's made some new friends? <laughs> some new Look, gaming friends. These guys, these guys, these guys come on at a reasonable time, seven o'clock. They're in bed <laughs> by oh, nine. Shots oh, poo, 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 so poo. Poo. Some kids at the park. I'm too tired to be gaming at ten. Like <laughs> starting gaming at ten is not ideal for me. <laughs> anyway, the list with Sam is actually seventy-two. Yeah. 
um but yeah so so basically they were like yeah look we, we bought it we're playing it it's pretty good um in fact they said it was really good and i was like mm, okay um and i was originally gonna buy battlefield 2042 uh because i kind of always been more battlefield than call, uh, call of duty um anyway and 2042 just got so much bad feedback and apparently it's potentially could be free to play anyway so i thought you know what i'll buy the bullet i'll spend the money i'll buy call of duty and to my surprise, it's actually really good. Oh, well, I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. It's not too over the top. It seems pretty well balanced. The maps seem pretty good. It's got some of the old maps in from um, World at War, uh, which I noticed. Um, and, I mean, it is still COD, you know, run and gun kind of thing. But there's not too much craziness going on. There's not crazy kill streaks. There's a few, but not like, you know, crazy, stupid ones. Um, yeah. It, it it was yeah i just had some really good fun on it like you know and i thought you know if i could pick one to, to stash you know i never would have thought i would have picked call of duty um but um yeah i'd have to say that based on my, what the you know the time i've played it i've only probably put about four hours in this week to it but from the four hours i've played you've I've enjoyed really it, enjoyed it. So. yeah I've, I've yeah i've enjoyed it and i haven't enjoyed a, a shooting game um like that for for a little while um yeah you know, so much so that I was up, you know, I was up playing it for several hours uh, a couple of nights ago. And normally I would have, you know, been well in bed on a, on a school night. I'd have been well in bed by uh, 10 o'clock. But I was up to about half 11 playing that. So, yeah. Um, I mean, to hear that, he can stay up late for his new friends. Not for no, us. they're gone. They're gone. <laughs> playing on my own. That was all wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, um, no, that's a, quite an interesting uh, stash. I mean, in terms of like our opinions on on games and stuff, this is the thing. Um, opinions on games and everything are obviously are subjective. You know, individuals are, like different things. I mean, um, I think it's down to your own experience that you yeah, get from that particular game. Exactly, um, yeah. Some people might play Call of Duty or, or any other game and just get a really bad experience. You know, they go on, they get. You know whether they get trolled by people or they just get absolutely wrecked and you just don't yeah. enjoy it or or you just can't get into it and then some people they just you know you go on it and straight away you're like oh yeah this is good i'm having fun and that's it and, and literally it can be a case of that first couple of hours of playing a game will be the make or break for it for people do you know what i mean and yeah, yeah it just right. happened that this 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 for me just yeah i just i, I pretty good like i can't complain you know it's, yeah, uh, at the end of the day if you're enjoying it that's what matters you know that's why you know this is our own individual stash so uh yeah i mean uh, the only way i can relate is back um when i because i wanted to purchase a second playstation 4 um because i was greedy back in the day it was when call of duty ghosts was coming out now Call of Duty Ghosts um, wasn't received very well at all. Now, I was um in an R in, or should I sell, because it came with the console, should I sell it? I was going to sell uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, and then I thought, no, do you know what, I'm going to give it a go. Hand on my heart, I loved the crap out of the campaign of Call of Duty Ghosts, and the multiplayer was pretty solid, I thought, too. However, if you look online you'll see a lot of people saying the opposite. So that's what I mean. It's quite subjective. It depends on whether you yourself enjoyed what you've you've done, uh, what you've played. So, yeah. So Call of Duty Vanguard is in Sam's stash. Thank you for that, Sam. Um, right. Andy, can we have your stash game this week, please? You can. I've picked one that I don't know if anyone else in the lounge has played before, but... It left such a lasting impression on me, and I think I've mentioned it to Barney um, ever since I started playing it, is a game called The Tourist. I've so, heard you mention that. Uh, that was on Game Pass, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, on Game Pass. Yeah. The Tourist was a Xbox launch title. So originally, okay. it was only available on the Xbox PC and Switch, mm -hmm. um, and I believe late last year, it was made available on the Sony consoles. Um but it was a Xbox launch title. The easiest way to explain it is, is, is it Voxel? V-O-X-E-L? Is that the art style? Where it's like made of blocks? I think. Oh, right, Maybe. yeah. So I don't think pixelated is the right term. I think it's voxelated or voxel, um, where each, each graphic's made up of all little cubes and things. Yeah. Um, so it's that art style. But, and it's very, it plays and it has the feel of an old NES or SNES game, but running at 120 frames per second in 4K. The colours are beautiful. 
It, it, it just looks fantastic for such a basic art style. Um, and the gameplay, it's an action adventure, um, sort of more adventure than action, with lots of mini games hidden in, item collecting, uh, lots of puzzle solving. Mm -hmm. But it is such a relaxing, engaging, chilled gaming experience. I imagine I 100% trophied it in maybe eight hours, give or take. Um, oh, so wow. I imagine you could probably complete the game in four or five hours, which going back to what we were discussing earlier, very few games are like that nowadays. So it was nice to be able to enjoy a game, sink your time into it, which you don't have a lot of and you want to invest it wisely and feel like you got a hell of a return. And it was such, it, it, I use the word loving, it's such a lovable fun game some of the puzzles and mini games are actually really n not obscenely like ninja guide and difficult but there is a learning curve you do have to maybe try the puzzle a handful of times you may have to do the mini game like 10 times to sort of learn the pattern and things like that mm. then there's some easier ones but it's just such a really pretty lovable engaging it's like a love note to the games like i say on the nes and the snes made for a current gen console but it's not just about looking pretty it plays superb it's so smooth such a great balance great length of time really cool story and it's basically mm. called the tourist because you play a guy who's on holiday you rock up to an island on the island you have a few you know like your tiki par work you might have a dj there you might have a, a water sport instructor and you have some fellow guests You've got an island, you've then got several other islands, so you can basically find a, a canoe and you can canoe around the island or travel to different islands. Each island fundamentally has groups of puzzles, collectibles, things like that. You have to talk to the, the other island inhabitants, solve the puzzles, do the mini games, unlocking basically a piece of a bigger puzzle. Um, once you've sort of completed all of the other islands, a secret island opens up, and I won't spoil it for anyone else, so then obviously you, you head towards the end game. But it's such a cool, engaging game that you don't have to sink 100 hours into and yeah. you don't have to brush or feed your horse. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in all seriousness, it's, I think, as far as I'm aware, it has got pretty decent reviews, but it's one of those games that flies under the radar. It probably got ignored by most people, given, you know, it, next gen. It doesn't look next gen, but it does play it. Um, it's not a, 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 you know, an A-grade title and things like that, but if you give Tourist even half hour of your time, I'm sure you'll fall in love with it. Yeah. And then your love, you know, your affairs only going to last five hours and you can complete it and think, you know what? That was a hell of a journey. I really enjoyed that. Um, but it's been a long time since I played a game with such, like I say, such a love note to the past, that retro feel, that played current gen, and made me feel good, and it, it it was just a real enjoyable game. So that is my that is my stash. Yeah, I think you've sold it to me. I mean, uh, uh, I've had a look on Google, and um, I really like it. like you said the art style, um, the look of the game. It just already makes you feel chill just looking at it. You know, it looks yeah, again <laughs> the music, the sound effects. It is a chill game, and to to put how much of a stash. Obviously, I got it when it was on Game Pass. I think it left Game Pass maybe tail end of last year or something like that. Yeah. Um, I'd pay money for it. I, I, yeah, it's not a 40, 50 quid game. I, I haven't checked. I imagine it's probably 12, 13, 15 quid, something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's worth the money. I would pay that for that game. It really is a little jewel, a jewel to be found that people should you know, d dip their toes into. And I think give it half hour of your time, you'll fall in love with it and you'll thank me later. Ah. Yeah, I think I might... Um... Yeah, I think I might have a, have a look at that, mate. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's um, it's on. You can get it on Steam for fifteen pound forty nine. Um, that's cool. Did Did you say it was? Is it available on anything else? Yeah, Nintendo Switch. Is it Is it on the Game Pass? It was on Game Pass. I think it's been removed. It was a launch title on Game Pass. Ah, um, okay. but I don't. It's not on there anymore. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll have a look at that. It does look uh, pretty good, mate. Yeah, especially if you've got a little bit of a vein running through you that likes the old retro games, it yeah. taps into that, but it plays like a modern gen game. Um, 
And it's even little things like you, there's um, a certain island where there's a little arcade in there and you actually get to play little arcade machines that are again done in the old sort of 8-bit style arcades and things like that. <laughs> and it is, like I say, it's just lovable. It's a real, you know, there's no blowing heads off things and killing zombies. It's a really cool, lovable puzzle game. And if you like those adventure puzzle games, it, it's just so well pack, packaged and polished. A really good game. Nice, nice. Yeah, I think uh, definitely be checking that one out. Thank you very much for uh, for that, Andy. So quite quite a varying uh, variant of of games there. Um, I think uh, you know it works quite well how we've decided to uh, to do our trash or stash segment now. Um, Affy Benz, when I was streaming earlier, um, he did give some feedback and said he's actually really enjoying that segment because uh, obviously we did it in the last. Thing. I explained to him that the changes that we've uh, decided to make. Um, I think it's I think it's good that you've made the changes up because it gives yeah. people an even more variety of games as well because we're all yeah. picking our own individual ones. So, you know, depending on how many people are on the cast, you know, it's two per person. So yeah. that's a, that's a positive. And I think another thing as well is if we don't necessarily always have the time to play the games, we can always at least say, I know it is trash or stash, but. Let's just say we only managed to get a stash or a trash. At least you know there is also yeah, at that. Yeah, there's something. Um, yeah, there's something we can. Yeah, I'm. Uh, so no, I think I think doing it this way, it um, it just gives everyone. You know, we can work around it, and you know, we can if we have time, we're able to, you know, to go and uh, to to play a game or whatever. Because then, rather than before, where it was like this is the game we're going to trash, or this is the game we're going to stash, or however we were doing it, you know, yeah. it kind of forces you to have to then take time out your day to go and download it, play that particular game. Yeah. Whereas if yeah, so I think yeah, good idea, good uh, good revision on that, and um, I think yeah. it will give more more back to the uh, to the community and the people as well. Yeah, definitely, and I mean, obviously, we're all fairly uh, we all fairly differ in our the games that we really sort of love or hate. Um, yeah, and, and there's a good mixture there. What we just yeah, and that's yeah. what I mean. I think uh, obviously the listeners um, they may um, what's the word I'm looking for. They may resonate with one of us in terms of our game styles and our game choices, exactly, decisions, yeah. and like this, like you say, it's it's giving that wider sort of spectrum of games to, um, yeah. So, so are you basically saying we're gonna look at our own groupies? <laughs> you never know. You never know. Hurrah! <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the end of the trash and stash uh, segment, and we're going to wrap up this episode at the moment. But uh, if you've got anything um, you'd like to say on the trash or stash um, for this week, uh, you'd like to tell one of us we're wrong for trashing, or even we're wrong for stashing, let us know. You can do so by emailing Luigi's Gaming Lounge at gmail dot com. That's Luigi's Gaming Lounge at gmail.com so uh, we're going to wrap that up here guys for this week that's been episode 39 uh, Andy, Barnaby Sam, once again thank you very much for uh, joining me on uh, this week's episode thank um, you, much appreciated. Uh, know where I'd rather be ah oh, beautiful and uh, to you listeners thank you very much for coming back and listening each week or if you're a new listener thank you very much for listening and we will see you in episode 40 can you believe it guys next week episode 40 enjoy guys and we'll see you soon bye for now bye bye see ya